Let's take a look at route summarization. This is also called, by the way, supernetting. So it's the opposite of subnetting. Here's what we're actually trying to accomplish. Normally, if I have some routers, say, such as, say, on the internet, and a packet comes along, that router needs to know where to send the packet. And so it builds inside of itself a routing table. That routing table can be manually built. There are some automated tools to build it. Uh, but let's say that this router over here has these four networks on it. This router has these four networks. And then this router only has this one network. Well, this routing table says if it's a 100 network, 100 network here, send it out of the G1 interface. If it's on the 101 network, if the packet occurs is destined for the 101 network, send it out the G1, 102 out of G1, and so on. So it has each of these networks in mind. Now remember, routers don't care about individual IP addresses. They only care about network addresses. So um, it just says any of these first four, send it out of G1. Any of these second four, send it out of G2, the 110, 11, 12, and 13 networks. If it's on this network, send it out of G3. Now I don't have a default route built in here, uh, which normally we would have which says if it's on some other network, say the 172.16 network, where would I send it? Well, you would send it to the default route, whatever that is, but we won't worry about that here. We'll worry about that later. This, as you can see, could get pretty large. In a real-life situation, this could have hundreds or even thousands of entries in it. However, we can summarize this and make it much smaller. This is the summarized version of it, and you can see I only have three entries here. Now, they're kind of funny numbers. Where in the world did I get 196? Well, we'll be taking a look at that as we go through this. Let's just compare those two routes and as or routing tables. And as you can see, uh, number one, I could run out of memory if I have a large enough routing table over here. And this routing table, I won't run out of memory. It will be faster in order to do the processing to figure it out. It will use much less CPU uh, power in order to figure this out. And so where we can, we really want to summarize. Now let's look at how we do it. So I'm just going to look at this chart here, and I'm going to choose one of these to summarize. But let's just choose this one up here that I now have a circle around. We'll summarize those routes. So I'm going to take all four of those routes, and I'm just going to list them right here in such a way that they are directly underneath each other. Now, I'm going to expand the addresses where the first difference occurs. Well, 192 and 168 are the same all the way down. But in the third octet, the difference begins to occur. So I'm going to expand out the third octet, and it will look like this, so that that third octet is expanded. Now I'm going to determine where the very first change occurs bit by bit. Well, I have a 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1. That's the same in all of these. And then it begins to change after that. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So that's where I'll draw my line. The next thing I'll do is zero the bits to the right of that line. So these are all zeros. Everything to the right of that line is now zeros. I'll change the subnet mask to the new location. Well, if these first, this first octet represents 8 bits, and the second one represents 8 bits, that's 8 plus 8, that's 16 bits. And then the next one is 17 bits. And then this next one is 18 bits. This one's 19 bits, uh, 20 bits, 21 bits, and 22 bits over here. It's hard for me to get that to highlight there. There we go, 22 bits right there. So we're going to make that a slash 22 using CIDR notation rather than um, subnet masks, although we can translate back and forth, of course, quite easily. Now I'm just going to translate what uh, is left over here. I'm going to translate this third octet back to dotted decimal, and I will get 100 for that. And if you'd like, we can prove that. I'll just go ahead and clear this uh, calculator here. And uh, what we're going to do is just take binary here, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, and then 0, 0. So we're taking the whole octet, not just what's to the left of it. And you can see that the decimal of this octet is 100. 
and so that will be my final solution I will say 100 and then dot zero and a slash 22 and that's my solution all right just for fun then let's take this uh, other group here and do the same thing to it so I'm just going to list them all out again the third octet is where the difference begins to occur so I'll expand the third octet I'll draw a line where the uh, where the change occurs because here I got a one zero and here I've got a one one so uh, only the first three bits uh, can be used now and now I'll just zero all the bits to the right of that and change the subnet mask in this case the CIDR notation to the correct notation that's 8 16 17 18 19 so our new CIDR is 19 and then I'll just translate this entire octet all of that back into dotted decimal form and if we were to do the math on that we would get 96 so that's my solution 192.168.96.0 that's how it's done folks that's route summarization which we will use uh, when we get into uh, routing tables later on